Hi, thanks for joining me in another video. Today we get to drive Rivian's second passenger model in their lineup, the R1S, a three-row SUV. All right, let's begin our adventure exploring this electric SUV. Let's talk cost. We're looking at a base price of $78,000 for the adventure package and driving our way up with options. You can choose from the standard dual motor all wheel drive or upgrade to the performance for $5,000 or the quad motor for $8,000. Upgrading your battery pack will cost you $6,000 for the large and $16,000 for the max pack. If you want all terrain, then that's going to add another $3,600. So this vehicle's starting price is already pretty steep, but it can get even pricier. But what do we get for this Valium? Well, for starters, the range on these vehicles varies from 260 to 400 miles, depending on your configuration, and it gets pretty quick 0 to 60 times. Even on the base dual motor all-wheel drive system, it does 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. Today, we're spoiled and get the treat of driving a quad motor all-wheel drive R1S with a large pack and all-terrain upgrade. Unfortunately, with these wheels, our range gets knocked down a lot. According to the Rivian website, we can expect to get an estimate of 289 miles on a full charge, but the EPA website states 274 miles. But we do get a crazy fast acceleration of 0 to 60 in only 3 seconds. Alright, let's take a walk around the R1S. First up, the front. And here we see the same headlights as we do in the R1T. In my R1T video, I say the oval lights remind me of Kirby, and I don't hate that. Actually, the lights on their electric delivery van make me smile more. They are also cartoonish, but circular. Anyway, moving back to the subject at hand. Down here, there are two front toe hooks that come standard with the R1S. And up here, underneath this big hood, we have the frunk. A big one at that. The frunk's volume is 11.1 .1 cubic feet. That's the same size as the R1T. There is also a drain so you can rinse it out should it get dirty. I wish they had some outlets or USB ports up here for charging devices. I think that'd be pretty useful. What I don't like about this space is its opening. I prefer the way it's set up in the Ford F-150 Lightning. In that truck, the front also lifts, leaving a low slide in surface. This way, when you want to put a cooler in the front, you don't have to lift it way up. This cooler is empty, so it's no problem lifting it this high. But if it was full of ice and drinks, it'd be a lot more work to get it in here. Being able to slide things in at waist height would be a huge plus. Making our way onto the side, we see the yellow accent badging for the quad motor. And standing up tall, we see the 20-inch all-terrain upgrade. We're looking at 200.8 inches in length and 81.8 inches in width with the mirrors folded in, and a wheelbase of 121.1 inches. The handles are flush with the door, but pop out when you approach it. Because of the third row, there isn't enough room for a gear tunnel like was present on the R1T. I guess you can't buy the camper girl for the R1S. But that's okay because this space is fully utilized, nothing wasted here. Now let's check out the trunk. So back here, we have a big opening. So that's the lift gate up and the tailgate lowered. I already thought this SUV kind of looked like a Range Rover, but this really sealed the deal. Behind the second row, there's 46.7 cubic feet of storage room, and the total interior storage volume is 14.7 cubic feet. All the back row seats can fold down, making this a great option to sleep in or pack in a lot of things. The seating configurations give you a lot of flexibility. You can auto-fold the second row and also individually fold down the seats. There are also sliding tie-down loops and a small compartment to store other accessories. All around the car, there are 11 cameras, 12 ultrasonic sensors, and 5 radars, which are used for the Driver Plus system. Similarly to Tesla, some of those cameras are used for your dash cam to record clips while driving. When parked, the GearGuard security system records video as well. Next is the interior. In the center is a 15.6-inch center touchscreen and a smaller 12.3-inch driver display. You can control everything from this screen, including the floor or your vents. It has everything you'll need except for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Since launching the R1T, Rivian has pushed out a few over-the-air updates, one of those being their pet comfort mode, which is like Tesla's dog mode. It will leave the climate on for your pets and display it on the screen. 
Last year, they also released Camp Mode, Soft Sand Mode, Neil Mode, and others. The screen is pretty responsive and moves quickly. I like this color combo with the light gray seats and dark ash color through the dash. It really gives it a high quality look. Seems like these light gray seats would be easy enough to clean with the vegan leather, but I don't know, I'd still be cautious. This is an adventure vehicle after all, things will get messy. We're set for any kind of weather with our heated and cool seats and heated steering wheel. The R1S has so many little convenient features throughout the car. On the driver's door, there is a small flashlight that just pops out. Never know when you'll need that. Plus under the center console, there's a portable Bluetooth speaker. You can just slide it out. Pretty neat, right? You can plug in your devices with one of the eight USB ports around the car, like here in the front, two behind the headrests, two underneath the screen in the back, and two back in the cubbies. Your backseat passengers can also control their climate with the small screen behind the front seats. In the back are big seats to comfortably fit four, and you can get a little cozier with the middle seat for five. Rivian also states that both the second and third row can hold car seats and booster seats. The second row can even fit three car seats. Okay, I'm sitting in the third row seat, and earlier I said these seats are big, which is true, but if you're sitting back here and the second row seats are kind of angled back, kind of naturally where someone would sit, you lose leg room. So I'm shorter, so I guess I'm okay, but I'm still kind of bending my knees upwards. So it's not as comfortable on the third row. So yeah, kids could go back here and you'd put the car seat back here, but not too comfortable. But anyway, under here you have some USB ports to charge, cup holder, and the same thing here on the other side as well. Lastly, for those nights you're camping, the glass panoramic roof is a nice touch to look at the stars. This is neat. There's an air compressor for times you'll need to fill up your own tires or even someone else's. One of the cool things about Rivian vehicles is their vehicle to load capabilities. In the R1S, there are two 120 volt outlets. These outlets can come in handy for so many things like powering up a campsite, charging up another car, or even supplying power to the essentials during a power outage. The Rivian R1S is designed to go off-roading. It has legit capabilities to go exploring. Unfortunately, this isn't my vehicle, so we'll treat it with respect and stay on the paved roads. But no mind, as we will still be able to feel its performance either way. We're going to take a drive up to Sedona, Arizona to see the beautiful red rock scenery, where we're a little out of order as you saw me in Sedona at the beginning of the video, the magic of editing. All right, let's go for a drive. Now I've driven single motor cars, dual motor cars, and even tri-motor cars, but this is the first time I'm driving a quad motor vehicle. Talk about driving modes, this vehicle has 10 driving modes, including all-terrain, off-roading, soft sand, snow. I mean, you can take this thing anywhere, even take a shortcut to work and go through the mountains. Overall, the ride quality is good and well controlled, but there is some bounce to it on uneven surfaces. So on the freeway, there is some wind noise coming in. I wish it did a little better because it is kind of noisy in here and a tad bit rattly in here too. There's also some road noise coming in, but I suspect that's due to the all-terrain tires. The visibility is great in this car. I have minimal blind spots and the windows are big. Even the back window is good. All Rivians come standard with Driver Plus, which is Rivian's driver assistant system. If you're familiar engaging Tesla's autopilot, then this will be very similar. To engage Rivian's lane keep assist, all you have to do is double tap down on the gear stock. There you go. Highway Assist is on. On this drive, I've been using Highway Assist and it's been doing pretty good. It really likes to hug the center of the lane and when we make these wide turns, it really likes to veer over to the left, which makes me a little nervous at times. Save wear on your brake pads by using one pedal driving. You can switch between standard and high for regenerative braking levels. It takes a little getting used to one pedal driving. So here we're going downhill and I'm not using the brakes. I'm just lifting my foot off the accelerator to slow down. So your motor is recuperating energy downhill. 
We're driving a very heavy SUV, but with these powerful motors, we should accelerate in a blast. Let's try a sprint. Oh my God. Whew, that is quick. But that was so weird. The front of the car kind of went up. There is a rear and front view camera and also 360 degree view system. But as you can see right here, the stitching is kind of off on the 360. All Rivian R1T and R1S vehicles are built in an all-wheel drive configuration, but this takes it to a whole new level. Each wheel on this SUV is individually driven by its own motor, which is fascinating. These motors are pretty powerful too. This huge SUV has a 0 to 60 time of only 3 seconds. It's got 835 horsepower and can even tow up to 7,700 pounds. The battery pack powering this SUV is pretty impressive too. It's made up of 7,776 lithium-ion 2170 cells. The 7,777 cell is in the door for your charged up flashlight. The pack itself is broken into nine modules and is liquid cooled with a capacity of 135 kilowatt hours, according to articles I found since Rivian doesn't state it on their website. Since the battery makes up the floor of the vehicle, it gives this SUV a low center of gravity, which will help you when you're off-roading. We have an 11.5 kilowatt onboard charger, which is capable of charging up the car in a few hours. With Rivian's battery packs being so big, it'd be nice to see a more powerful onboard charger, but this will have no problem filling up your car overnight. Rivian is partnering with Tesla and bringing the next port to their car, following the same schedule as the other manufacturers. In 2024, they'll be getting an adapter, and in 2025, the next port will be installed on the car. One of the other nice things about this partnership is that Rivian can display Tesla charging locations, which have magic docks installed. Makes life easy, and once the adapters are available to charge using NACs, I'm guessing this map will get updated again. This SUV comes with a pretty decent warranty. The comprehensive warranty is good for five years or 60,000 miles. The battery and drivetrain warranty is good for eight years or 175,000 miles. So it sounds like Rivian is pretty confident in the quality of their trucks. It's also worth talking about the Rivian Adventure Network, an exclusive network just for Rivian vehicles. These chargers are currently able to provide over 200 kilowatts peak charging, though Rivian promises they'll one day get over 300 kilowatts. Since these chargers use a CCS standard, anybody can pull up and plug in their car, but it won't start a charge for you. You'll have to go up the street to charge at EA or EVgo. With the Tesla network opening its gates, the days of exclusive networks are numbered. Rivian has stated that they plan to open up this network one day, but it hasn't happened just yet. They also have a network of level 2 chargers out in the wild they call waypoints. These smaller chargers are capable of up to 11.5 kilowatts of charging, matching the capabilities of the truck. We've seen the R1T charge up before and it did a pretty good job. But let's see how this SUV does on its own exclusive network. So this is the first time I'll be charging off the Rivian Adventure Network. When I did the R1T review, they didn't have the Adventure Network as expanded, so I'm glad that they have one here in at Sedona. So to open up the charging port, just push on those three buttons. Open this up. All right. And currently it says plug in to charge your Rivian. This one is free, stay adventurous. So no cost to charge, which is great. So it's just plug in and charge. Waiting for it to connect. It's taking a little bit. Come on Rivian, there you go. Okay, good, so we're charging up, and this isn't our real charging test where we test out the charging curve. I just wanna test out the Adventure Network itself. Um, and it's pretty easy, just plug and charge. It works as similar as Tesla, where it just bills your account. But these ones are free, so no billing here. We're pretty good. Right now, I think we were like at 47%. Um, it's going up really high. Let's see, we got 212. I just wanted to note something funny. So on the video, you can see that these lights are flashing different colors, kind of like a rainbow. But right now, as I'm standing, that's not happening. It's just white. What happens is when you charge, it actually is green. So if we walk over here, here you can see it's a solid green. And I can see that as well. But it's kind of funny that those are just flashing colors through the camera. All right. That was easy, it just worked. Take no Electrify America, Nivigo. 
All right, it's time for official charging test. The car is at 19% and we did precondition on the way over here. We're gonna plug into a 350 kilowatt EVgo charger. Luckily, one of the 350 kilowatt EVgo chargers was working. At this point, there were only four chargers and one of them was down. The fee at these chargers was 41 cents per kilowatt hour. Our official charging test went pretty well. In total, we charged up 86.7 kilowatt hours in 35 minutes, which cost $39.61. The charging graph is pretty interesting. For the first few minutes, we maxed out just over 200 kilowatts. Though looking at the amperage rating on this charger, we're actually going as fast as this charger can provide for a 400 volt car. So maybe Rivian vehicles can charge even faster than these chargers allow. Though Rivian's own chargers also max out at 500 amps, so I'm not sure how they plan to charge over 300 kilowatts one day unless they release an 800 volt vehicle later. Later on, the charging rate starts to slope down. I feel like with the pack this big, we should be sustaining higher rates for longer. Overall, it was a successful charging session without any hiccups, so that's good. You'll never be bored driving a Rivian vehicle, and if you opt for a quad motor, you'll be king of adventure. The R1S offers a lot of storage, good passenger capacity, and nice range, even with the standard battery pack. But if you really want a longer range without breaking the bank, go for the regular dual motor and large pack. It's a firm ride and it's pricey, but for those that seek a thrill, Rivian offers great off-road capabilities. It's a very versatile SUV. Thanks for spending time with me today. Have any V I can review? Email me at info at kaizv.com. Support our channel and check out our Kaya stickers. Kai is my dog. Follow us on social media and learn more about EVs on my website, kaizv.com. That's all for now, and happy charging.